Hey everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. So I wanted to talk about something that I probably wouldn't be able to talk about on the podcast because it would be relatively late news by then, but I just wanted to share a story with you guys that you've probably heard about, but I wanted to kind of rant here because it really pissed me off and it's been kind of stewing over, you know, in my mind all day and I'm getting more angry about it. But I wanted to talk about the Republican Party and how big of a joke they are and how I don't even think you can call them a party anymore. So, as you all know, today was the first day of the 115th Congress, and the session began today. And so the night before, they met behind closed doors, Republicans, that is, with Republican leaders. And so they were talking about their plans for the 115th Congress and what is something that's urgent that they should tackle. Now, did these buffoons talk about a way that they can prove to the American people that they're capable of governing and that they care about the American people and that they want to do something for the American people? No, you know, I mean, there's issues like the Flint drinking water crisis where these residents, nearly 100,000 people, uh, they don't have clean drinking water. They have lead in their water that's contaminated. There are 3,000 other cities with higher levels of lead in their water than Flint. They didn't want to do anything about that. They didn't want to talk about the real issues. They decided they wanted to get in office and their first order of business would be to gut the Office of Congressional Ethics. So they want to gut that office, make it useless, so that way they could be more corrupt. That's what they decided to do first. So if there's any indication that this is going to be one shit show to watch over the next two years, this is it right here. Now to give you some more context, Despite a warning from Speaker Paul Ryan and Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy, House Republicans adopted a proposal by Judiciary Chairman Bob Goodlatte to put the Office of Congressional Ethics under the jurisdiction of the House Ethics Committee. The office currently has free reign, enabling investigators to pursue allegations and then recommend further action to the House Ethics Committee as they see fit. Now, the office would be under the thumb of lawmakers themselves. The proposal also appears to limit the scope of the office's work by barring them from considering anonymous tips against lawmakers, and it would stop the office from disclosing the findings of some of their investigations, as they currently do after the recommendations go to House Ethics. So that means they would disclose it to the public. They don't want them to do that. Now, Democrats created the Office of Congressional Ethics in March of 2008, after the Abramoff scandal in which the well-connected GOP lobbyists pled guilty to conspiring to bribe public officials, Abramoff and his clients had used campaign donations and favors to sway members, including former Representative Bob Ney, who served 30 months in prison and a number of staffers. So it's not like we don't already have legalized bribery and these campaign contributions that are tantamount to corruption, but they want absolutely no checks against corruption whatsoever. Now, this is a vote that was orchestrated specifically by people who were under investigation by the OCE. So, for example, I want to name these people. There was Blake Ferenthold, who was accused of sexually harassing a staffer and was being investigated by the OCE. There was Peter Roskim, who accepted a trip to Taiwan as a gift. And then there were other people who were being investigated, such as Sam Graves and Steve Pierce. They all supported this effort. Now, this was voted 119 to 74. And this was voted late at night when nobody could really uh, know what was going on. And it was just the whole thing was shady and the whole action is shady. Now, just to be clear here, again, this isn't them simply abolishing the OCE. This is them gutting it and making it useless. And the reason why this is an office that is one of the few checks on corruption is because it has this degree of separation between Congress and the office itself. I mean, there's uh, this independence that makes it better. But what these guys want to do is they want to say, no, we're actually going to be in control of investigations and we want to stop them from releasing this information to the public. We want to basically tie their hands so that way they're useless and that way we can be more corrupt and accept gifts and be more corrupt. It's just, I mean, this is embarrassing and they chose to do it either way. I Like, I don't understand. Everyone is watching right now. Republicans are in control of all three branches of government, and you guys choose to do this? Are you trying to look like shit? Are you trying to get the American people to hate you even more than they already do? 
It's already the case that Republicans are a minority party because 26% of the country are registered Republicans. That's a minority. So a majority of the country dislikes you. Many of us despise you. And you're doing this as your first order of business? This takes stupidity. I mean, I thought that the Democrats were really dumb in how they ran a shitty campaign in 2016 how they were just overtly corrupt, how Hillary Clinton did things that would obviously inevitably come back to bite her in the ass, which is not do the get out the vote campaign, not campaign in Wisconsin. But I mean, this is a different level of stupid right here. Now, I'm not excusing Democrats from their stupidity as well, because they're all stupid. But I mean, this is some next level bullshit right here. If you want to show the American people that you don't give a damn about them, this is exactly what you do. You ignore the issues that's impacting them and you focus on the one office that really is a strong check still. I mean, I shouldn't say it's a strong check because it, it's not everything, but these guys are butthurt because they're being investigated for their corruption. And so what they want to do is look out for themselves and gut this office. It's, it's absurd to me. Like, I can't get over it. This is completely absurd. Now, obviously, this is outrageous to people, and people were outraged. And what happened? Well, their offices were flooded with hundreds of phone calls. People were ambushing their Facebook page, and they were basically uh, holding their feet to the fire. Grassroots activism stopped this from happening. We have got just a tremendous number of calls to our office here and district offices concerned about this, Representative Walter Jones said, according to Bloomberg News. Jones's communications director, Allison Tucker, told Think Progress the congressman also received numerous emails and messages on Facebook from constituents. So that just kind of gives you a taste of what happened. And when they actually received scrutiny, they scrapped it. So they convened an emergency conference on Tuesday morning. And all 119 members who voted for this, they decided to drop the changes. Just like that. That is what activism gets you. If you call these people and you don't allow them to do shady things, that works. Because they are beholden to us, not their donors, uh, not any corporations. They're beholden holding to the American people. So if we actually do hold their feet to the fire... Yeah, this can happen. Now, even Donald Trump tweeted about this. He said, with all that Congress has to work on, do they really have to make the weakening of the independent ethics watchdog as unfair as it is? Now, it's not unfair, Donald Trump. Uh, I know that he's not going to like it, and he'll later support this because this guy has more conflicts of interest than you could count on your hands or your feet. But, I mean, this is... Any idiot can see that this is a bad decision. If Donald Trump says, you know, maybe the optics of it, even if I agree with it, don't look good, then maybe you should take his advice. And thankfully they did. Now, people are trying to credit Donald Trump as saying, well, he's the one who got them to stop. No, this was grassroots activism. Donald Trump does not get credit for this. And there's a conclusion that I think is really important that we also have to take away. There's two conclusions. One is that grassroots activism actually works. So imagine if we did this for other issues, if we called them up and stormed their Facebook pages and demanded a single-player healthcare system. Imagine what we could accomplish. Also, um, the other takeaway is that this isn't over. What Donald Trump said there, it signaled to me that he doesn't so much want to stop them from going against the OCE uh, just in general. He just wants to delay it. So if you think that this is the last of it, unfortunately, you're mistaken. And I want to put this aside and not have to worry about it. But we should still be very skeptical of anything they do to try to gut this office because it's, it's incredibly, this is an important organization that we need. We have very little checks on governmental corruption and if we get rid of this one and you're basically look you're effectively getting rid of it because if you put <laughs> oversight of ethics and control or in the hands of congress you don't have oversight at all so we need this organization to remain independent otherwise it's not going to be effective it's not going to have any teeth so it's not over but at the same time i think this minor victory shows us what grassroots activism can accomplish. And, you know, I'm very thankful that people kind of came together to uh, name and shame these idiots who decided to be very corrupt, overtly so. And I love how now a lot of them, they don't even want to talk about these changes. They don't want to acknowledge that they supported it or voted for it. They are trying to hide from this action. 
But uh, no, I want to shame these people because they are just, they're, they're shameless. So let's say their names again. They are Blake Farenhold, Peter Roskam, Sam Graves, Steve Pierce. We don't know for sure about, you know, many of their names. These are people who spoke on the record to the media. So they kind of outed themselves for supporting this and they thought there would be no backlash. They thought that they could get away with gutting an ethics watchdog and there would be zero negative repercussions. Sorry, guys. Uh, no, you are corrupt, and this watchdog will still be on your ass. It will still be breathing down your neck, and so will the American people if you try to do anything about that. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.